of you who love your country. Many of you are Democrats because your parents and grandparents were Democrats. But you're, many of you are blue-collar workers, you're people of faith, some of you are union members, and you love your country. Some of you have served in the military, some of you are police officers, so forth. I want to talk to you specifically. The Democrat President of the United States today vetoed the Defense Authorization Bill. And he did it for two reasons. One, Congress is trying to prevent him from bringing al-Qaeda terrorists out of Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, into the United States prison system. And number two, he's saying that any increase in defense spending, we're talking about $38 billion in a $600 billion budget, there must be an increase on the domestic side, you know, for food stamps and welfare and illegal aliens and everything else. So he vetoed it. The first time, I believe, in half a century this has been done. Barack Obama does not care about our men and women in uniform. Barack Obama does not care the fact that all of our men and women in uniform serving in Afghanistan, serving in the Middle East, serving all over the world, learned tonight that he has vetoed a bill that modestly increases their pay and benefits, that ensures that they have the equipment that they need to protect themselves and protect this nation and do their job. I want you Democrats, the handful of you, relatively speaking, who are still rational, who still love this country to understand what I'm saying. This president is more radical than any man who's ever run for president of the United States. He makes George McGovern look like a right winger. The fact that he would use our men and women in uniform on the battlefield as pawns to increase domestic spending for people who haven't earned it, for illegal aliens, for people on the dole, is an outrage. It's a disgrace. He's turned his back on our men and women in uniform, and the enemy loves it. They love every second of it. Constantly playing chicken. My way or the highway. My way or your men and women in uniform. My way or somebody's son and daughter doesn't get protected, doesn't get pay. This is this man who's a disgrace, who I despise. The nation should rise up against this. Democrat, Republican, whatever, it doesn't matter. That's our military. That's somebody's father and mother. That's somebody's son and daughter. A tiny fraction of a percentage of this nation steps up to defend it. And this man uses him as a pawn to increase domestic spending for food stamps and welfare and whatever the hell it is. He would never do this to illegal aliens. He would never do this to federal prisoners. He and the Democrat Party do not treat our men and women in uniform the way they deserve to be treated with respect. They do not treat our men and women in law enforcement the way they need to be treated with respect. He's afraid to even call the terrorist enemy the terrorist enemy. But he has no problem cutting off funding to the United States military. Let me be clear. Let me repeat what I've said before. Barack Obama is a greater danger to the United States military than the Russian military, than the Chinese military. He is the greatest threat that our military faces. Because they don't have the power to cut off funding to our men and women in uniform. And I'll take it a step further. Look at the Veterans Administration. It is in a shambles. He made a couple of speeches. He appointed the new head, a new administrator. When the going got tough and the media actually picked up on it, now the media doesn't give a crap. Hundreds of thousands of vets died before they got the treatment that they were needing. Before they even got seen. And he doesn't give a crap. Not a crap. What a disgrace. And Benghazi, we still don't know where the hell this man was from 5.30 p.m. till he boarded that airplane to go to Las Vegas on a campaign trip. I'll tell you where he was. I've said it over and over again, and I hasn't, haven't been disproven. He went to the residence, and he went to sleep. Maybe he took in some sports, watching it on TV. But he didn't care. He does not care. He doesn't care. He didn't get to the facts, and he helped orchestrate a cover-up. He knew that that video was not the reason for the al-Qaeda terrorists to attack us at that compound. We know it's not the reason. Hillary Clinton knew it wasn't the reason. People within the State Department were saying, Oh, my God, this has nothing to do with any video, and I'm going to demonstrate it again. Jim Jordan at today's hearing. I hear there's no smoking gun. There's smoking guns all over the place. We've got a Gatlin gun of smoke coming out of this. And one other thing I would tell Trey Gowdy, the chairman of this committee. 
you get a transcript of Hillary Clinton's testimony, and you send it over to the Federal Bureau of Investigation and make sure they have it. Cut five, go. And yet five days later, Susan Rice goes on five TV shows, and she says this. Benghazi was a spontaneous reaction as a consequence of a video. A statement we all know is false. She should be impeached. She should be impeached right now. Because everybody at the State Department knew that statement was false. The president knew it was false. This is why Hillary Clinton took a pass on going on these five shows. Yeah, I don't really do that. Leave it to somebody else. How the hell does a serial liar like this, an incompetent, a leftist, how the hell is she the leading person who's going to be the Democrat nominee and potentially the president of the United States, thanks to the Republican establishment? I wrote a note to a buddy of mine. You'd know who it is, but I'm not going to tell you. This morning, and I, and I explained. We're going to lose this damn thing to Hillary Clinton because the Republican establishment would rather defeat us, conservatives, or Trump, or Cruz, or whomever, than defeat Hillary. They are that entrenched in the slop that is the public trough of the federal government. Continue, please. Here's what others have said. Rice was off the reservation. Off the reservation on five networks. White House worried about the politics. Republicans didn't make those statements. They were made by the people who work for you in the Near Eastern Affairs Bureau, the actual experts on Libya in the State Department. So, if there's no evidence for a video-inspired protest, then where'd the false narrative start? Started with you, Madam Secretary. At 10.08, on the night of the attack, you released this statement. Some have sought to justify the vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material posted on the Internet. At 10.08, with no evidence, at 10.08, before the attack is over, at 10.08, when Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty are still on the roof of the annex fighting for their lives, the official statement of the State Department blames a video. Blames a video. Because Obama's legacy and Obama's re-election were more important than anything else. And they're pulling the same stunt, the same cover-up to try and protect Hillary Clinton. Mr. Tough Guy, Mr. Obama with his veto pen today, calls in the media, calls in photographers to show that he's going to undermine the United States military, undermine American security. Proudly. Proudly does so. Because he wants $38 billion more in spending on the domestic side, and he wants to be able to bring the Al-Qaeda terrorists out of Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where they're far away from us and our families, into the United States. This is a man who has a truly perverse mindset and nothing but contempt for the American people. The communists taught him well in Hawaii. The communists taught him well at Occidental. The communists taught him well in law school. The communists taught him well after law school. Ayers, Wright, Khalidi. What a disgrace this man is. More Jim Jordan, cut six, go. You just gave a long answer, Madam Secretary, to Ms. Sanchez about what you heard that night, what you're doing, but nowhere in there did you mention a video. You didn't mention a video because there was never a video-inspired protest in Benghazi. One hour before the attack in Benghazi, Chris Stevens walks a diplomat to the front gate. The ambassador didn't report a demonstration. He didn't report it because it never happened. An eyewitness in the command center that night on the ground said no protest, no demonstration. Two intelligence reports that day. No protest, no demonstration. The attack starts at 3.42 Eastern Time ends at approximately 11.40 p.m. that night. At 4.06, an ops alert goes out across the State Department. It says this, mission under attack, armed men, shots fired, explosions heard. No mention of a video, no mention of a protest, no mention of a demonstration. But the best evidence is Greg Hicks, the number two guy in Libya, the guy who worked side by side with Ambassador Stevens. He was asked if there had been a protest would the ambassador have reported it? Mr. Hicks' response, absolutely. For there to have been a demonstration on Chris Stevens' front door and him not to have reported it is unbelievable, Mr. Hicks said. He said, secondly, if it had been reported, he would have been out the back door within minutes and there was a back gate. Everything points to a terrorist attack. Everything points to a cover-up. 
everything points to Hillary Clinton being a serial liar. She's always been a serial liar. She always will be, whether it's Travelgate or any of the other gates. She is a serial liar. It's time for the American people to put an end to this. It's time for the American people to put a to stop it. To promote this woman to President of the United States tells me that democracy has failed. If that should occur, Alexis de Tocqueville will have been right. He thought there were enough protections and balances in the American system where it wouldn't collapse from within as other democracies have. But he also said it was certainly possible. This is all related. The entire immigration scam, the election of Democrats, the uh, packing of the federal court system, the nullification of, of laws that they don't abide by, like sanctuary cities. This is all part and parcel of the same thing. We don't live in the America that we lived in 30 years ago when Reagan was president. Just took 30 years. Less than 30 years. This is a different place now. The big centralized government iron-fisted masterminds are in control. Even when they lose elections, they're in control. They control the media, they control Hollywood and academia, they control the bureaucracy, they control the courts. When they lose elections, they don't lose power. When they win elections, they expand their power. Experts knew the truth. Your spokesperson knew the truth. Greg Hicks knew the truth. But what troubles me more is I think you knew the truth. I want to show you a few things here. You're looking at an email you sent to your family. Here's what you said. At 11 o'clock that night, approximately one hour after you told the American people it was a video, you say to your family, two officers were, were, were killed today in Benghazi by an Al-Qaeda-like group. You tell, you tell the American people one thing, you tell your family an entirely different story. Also, on the night of the attack, you had a call with the president of Libya. Here's what you said to him. Ansar al-Sharia is claiming responsibility. It's interesting, Mr. Katala, one of the guys arrested and charged, actually belonged to that group. And finally, and most significantly, the next day, within 24 hours, he had a conversation with the Egyptian Prime Minister. He told him this, we know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. Stop right there. The evidence is overwhelming that she's a serial liar. The evidence is overwhelming this was a cover-up for the Obama campaign. It is overwhelming and it's unequivocal. Go ahead. One more time. We know, not we think, not it might be, we know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. State Department experts knew the truth. You knew the truth, but that's not what the American people got. And again, the American people want to know why. Why didn't you tell the American people exactly what you told the Egyptian Prime Minister? Well, and what you... does Hillary Clinton say in response to that? 